uh, you never get the level of feedback on your work that you do with meeting people who watch it and finding fans that love it and hate it. Um, that's just as much fun some days. <laughs> Dramatic readings of the internet can be fun at parties. Uh, but also meeting people and making friends all over the country. I've said before, because of my travels at conventions, I could get in my car any day of the week and drive to any state, and it doesn't matter what state my car broke down in, I've got friends there, and that's yeah. something that you can't put a price tag on at all, so. Including for mom. <laughs> short runtime, you know, that that is, it's an American market thing. Look at all the shows, you know, Adventure Time, regular show. SpongeBob was one of the first ones to do it. Went from, a, you know, a half hour show is in the United States is 22 minutes, and those are 11 minute format shows. So that is a big thing. Like when you're, when people are pitching new shows, shorter is better, and that is something, being that we talked about world market, that will, to some degree, you know, bleed over to, to uh, Europe and Asia when they're making their shows for the American market, you might start to see anime programs coming in at an 11 minute, you know, target time. 
Um, but as far as specific creators, I don't know any of you have anything. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure who's, um, I tend not to look ahead. I'm usually so buried in, in what I'm working on currently that I don't have time to look ahead. They say, this is your new show, and I start researching. Uh, so I don't know. I, you know, I know that if Nam Machine puts anything out, I, I definitely would love to have a hand in it. I love, I love working on this stuff. I've done two of these shows, so. Mm. Over to the I got it. Um, Well, I know for Kyoko in Madoka, she ends up, spoiler alert, she ends up um, sacrificing herself. And during that, she, uh, sorry, Chris. Okay. <laughs> I know a lot about what's coming. Okay, cool. Um, and she has this inner monologue to herself, and uh, she's basically, it's she's speaking to herself, but she's also talking to God, too. And she, you know, she says, just let me have just one, you know, one happy ending, at least one happy ending. And, oh, yeah, I was crying like a baby in the booth. It's, it can be tough. It can be absolutely challenging, especially if you're in an emotional mood that day. You know, if you're having a really crappy day and if you have a really sad scene, you can totally lose it. Um, I know Taliesin is known for <laughs> bringing very emotional scenes out of, the best emotional scenes out of people because um, he knows how to just get underneath their skin just to bring that bright emotion out and it's been Al Stanley died yeah, in a crash. Okay, now think about it. Yeah. You know, um, I, I will say it was, it was funny when we did uh, FTL of Memories and FTL of Melodies and I would just say uh, if you haven't seen it, I'm, I'm just going to go on record and say uh, that cast that includes Greg and David and Monica um, <laughs> is probably just one of the most phenomenal experiences I've had as a director, but uh, one, one of the actresses in the show, uh, Carly Mosier, in Tale oh, of uh, yes. Melodies, has this really long monologue that is just heartbreaking, and by the time we finished it, I, and she did it in two takes, but by the time she finished the second take, she fell apart in the booth. We had to stop recording for about ten minutes so that she could pull herself together, and it freaked her out. She had never had to go to that kind of place in the studio. She's done it on stage, and she came out, and I know she called Chris Patton, and Lucy, and several other people, she had her phone look, and she goes, oh my god, I just fell apart in the booth, is that okay? I, 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 I don't know what happened, it's out of control. Everybody's like, no, we've all done it. We've all been there at some point where, you know, you've just hit that moment of yeah. all and, and you know, the voice is, is just a, a, a means of, expressing what's going on inside. So you have to, so in those 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 difficult scenes where whatever it may be, you really, you, in order for it to be authentic and truthful and, and, and connected, you have to really go there as best as you can. So yeah, it, it, it can be difficult. I mean, it, it, it's something that you, where you really have to go there. You know, some of the scenes in Clannad, um, it, it, it you have to call down deep and, and figure out how to be there. And, and so it can be it can be emotional, it can be, uh, there was a, and, and on the flip side, when you're doing a scene where someone loses their mind, I mean, I, I just did, uh, worked on something that, um, you, <laughs> you're thinking of that scene now, but yeah. uh, uh, something I, I can't talk about the title, but, you know, for two episodes, this guy is going through this sort of transformation and, He's kind of slowly dying. You're not sure what's going on. And we literally had to schedule a whole day where we take major breaks so that vocally we'd be able to continue doing it, but also just, I mean, the, the scene never leaves a certain location for two whole episodes. And it's, uh, so yeah, things like that. You really have to, you have to emotionally prepare for it. And you can, you can, lose, you can lose your mind a little bit. <laughs> I have the total antithesis answer to this, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> uh, and the cool thing about that is no two actors approach something the same way. Uh, whatever works is what's important. Uh, I don't ever cry when I'm actually working on something. I think the only exception was Pro and Crusade because I had only just seen the last scene before I recorded it. So I was still just a mess. It had nothing to do with the acting. I was just all ripped up because I'd seen the scene. Oh. But uh, I. It's neat to be a voice actor because all I have to do is make the sounds of crying. 
And so I love to do that, and I'm not crying at all. And the funny thing is, I just, David and I just did the Sayuki uh, OVA, the, the Gaiden OVAs, and I cried the entire last episode, almost from start to finish. Never shed a tear once, but every time I watch it, I start, I start crying before a scene starts. Uh, <laughs> but it's just based on the, you know, I'm watching it as a viewer. It's not important for me to, to sound right, because I might sound dumb when I cry. Uh, and it might not convey any emotion, so uh, I make sure that it sounds like I'm crying, and but I cry in real life later. You, you do have a good point on that, because during Speed Graph, we had that, that point when I had to fall apart. And we did it in two <laughs> takes, but there was so much technically going on with flat work and stuff like that that I had to get, and certain hitches in the breath had to hit at exactly the right time. I couldn't, I couldn't afford to lose my focus on what I was doing. So in that point, you have to call up a lot of things that you do as an actor to pull that emotion up, but at the same time maintain your focus. The problem is, for me to do that, I nearly hyperventilated in the booth. And when we finish, Chris sees me holding onto the walls like this, and he goes, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> he jumped out of his skin, and he's like, I don't want to ask you to do it again. I said, I can do it again if you want. I thought it sucked. He's like, well, um, do this and this and this maybe. And I was like, okay. We did the whole scene again. Again, I'm holding onto the walls. Like, Chris, you're like, yeah. It's hard to breathe. I will never forget your look when I popped up and you're like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I've had actors pass out in the booth before. Yeah. John yeah. Schemmel did the longest Kamehameha in history. Oh, God. And yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Sean? I don't see him in the window. Anymore. Where's Sean? <laughs> Fling open the door to the booth, and he's like in the corner, just oh my gosh! I'm like I'll get up. I'm right. like no, 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 no. You stay there. We'll get you some water. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. When <laughs> I've had that happen, I was worried. <coughs> Especially with him. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, I was just wondering. You were all very talented voice actors. Oh, okay. and I play a lot of music, um, you know, when I'm not acting. So I sing and I play the drums and I play guitar and bass and stuff like that. So that's, I mean, and it's something that I love, love, love to do. And that was when I graduated from college. Before I graduated, that's sort of where I my focus. When I graduated from NYU and I had a degree in acting, but I was like, I want to be a rock star instead. Um, because why not, right? That's a smart career path. <laughs> um, it's a growth industry and all that. But, uh, but that's so that that's all I did for a while was just play music. So it's something I wish I could do more, but it is that is one of I guess my talents or or interests outside of the acting music. Um, I love photography. Um, I'm a freelance photographer. Am I amazing? No, but I think I'm okay. I think I'm good. But um, what are her, what are other talents are? Thank you. Um, and I, I happen to love it, even if I'm not fantastic, even if I'm not amusing. I love it. I love, as as corny as it sounds, I love creating art that way. I love making people feel beautiful. I love making them, you know. I've uh, shot Rachel a few times, actually, for headshots. Yeah, the bullet wounds to prove it. Oh, I was, I was waiting so, for what, that. What did you say? Yeah, she has the I missed it. She's a wonderful photographer, and actually some, some headshots that I've used for cons are pretty serious. Oh, thank you. That's one of my talents. That's what I love to do. Um, I am addicted to Lightroom 4. I'll admit it, I have a problem. <laughs> um, First deck. Uh, talents, anybody, any um, idea? If, if you hung around trouble. me much this weekend, <laughs> you saw two of my, two of my other absolute passions. Um, uh, stage combat has been a part of my life since I did Oliver at the age of 12. I am a, I am a stage combat junkie. Oh, he's um, I love working as a fight director. I love teaching stage combat. And then if any of you were at Anime Unscripted, yeah. uh, one, of my, uh, one of my other real passions is improvisational comedy. Uh, I, I've run a couple of different companies. Monica's performed with us for a while. Greg's performed with us for a while. Um, it, it's something that I'm very passionate about. Usually on my Kindle are at least two improvisational theory books. So, yeah, that, that's for me. I would say I DJ, but that's not a secret. 
Yeah. 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 Ye
a, a talking gum in uh, recently <laughs> in, in Gangstar Vegas, the video game that's coming out. Uh, like uh, Grand Theft Auto, when you're driving around, you hear the radio station, all the commercials, and there's a commercial for a new cop show with about a cop and his new partner. Is his penis? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's sort of like a Harvey Weinstein thing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's. Let's give a round of applause, come on! 